Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about the temperature coefficient, or Q10. This was added to AP Biology this year, and to be honest, I'd never even heard of it before. But what it is, is a ratio. It allows us to see what happens to the rate of reaction as we increase temperature 10 degrees. That's where the 10 comes from. If we define it, it's the factor by which a rate, R, of a reaction increases for every 10 degree rise in the temperature. But you have to remember that we don't have to measure two temperatures that are exactly 10 degrees apart to find an answer. And so let me give you an example of this. Imagine we have a goldfish. It's in a bowl and it's 17 degrees Celsius. Now in order to use Q10 you'll have to use Celsius or Kelvin to come up with your values. But let's say we're measuring its respiration rate. How do we do that? Well the goldfish on the side are going to have these operculum and as they breathe they're going to open up those operculum and we could count the number of breaths per minute and that's going to be their respiration rate. So let's say at 17 degrees Celsius, the respiration rate is 110 operculum movements per minute. And let's say we cool them off with a little bit of ice. And now it's 10 degrees, and they're going to breathe at a slower rate. It's a fun lab. You can slow it way down, and they almost come to a standstill because they're ectotherm. But now we really have all we need to calculate Q10. So we've got two temperatures, T1 and T2, and then we have two rates, R1 and R2. And this is going to be the equation right here. So make sure that your units are going to match, but all you do is divide your second rate by your first, and then you're going to raise it to an exponent where we're subtracting T2 minus T1. And so let's throw these values into our equation. So what do we get? 110 divided by 62. Again, that's our second rate minus our first rate. And then we're going to raise that to the power of 10 divided by our second temperature, 17 minus our first, which was 10. And so let's simplify a little bit. I get 1.77 raised to the 1.43. I plug that in my calculator, and I get 2.26. So that would be my Q10 value. It's not going to have any units. It's simply a ratio. Now, one thing I found interesting is that Q10 values in biological systems are usually going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. And it's nice to know what your answer is going to be. Now, this would be hard to solve with a four-function calculator. In other words, how could you do that? if we don't have a power button. Well, what I'm thinking is we could put values up here that make this an easier problem. And so let's say they put 15 and 10 here. That would be 10 divided by 5, which would be a squared value, and you should be able to solve that. Or maybe they won't even ask you questions about that on the test as well. But it's a cool concept to measure as we increase temperature what's happening to the rate of the reactions. So what Q10s could we measure? In other words, what are our, po what are our possible R's? Well, we could look at the velocity of a nerve impulse along a peripheral nerve in meters per second. Those could be our two rates, and then we could measure that at different temperatures. Or we could look at products being produced in a reaction, and that could be our R. Or we could look at heart contractions in ectotherms. Or we could look at water transported through an aquaporin over time at different temperatures. And so it really doesn't matter what your reaction rate is. If we look at two temperatures, we should be able to calculate Q10, and I hope that was helpful.